Thank you. Welcome back to the uh, morning committee meeting of the House Appropriations Committee. Today is Friday, the 11th of February. Uh, we're about to go into our second debrief of the public hearing session. Uh, we like to go through all of the information that has been uh, that has been we either received in person or that we received through written testimony. And uh, several of us, I know that I have. Um, I cannot speak for everyone, but I know that everyone has been looking at the at the written testimony. I've gone through all of it myself, and uh, definitely some consistent themes are uh, are uh, are coming to the forefront. So. This is a, a kind of um, freewheeling a little bit, but that's the way it is. So um, I'll start off again, and uh, and then everyone can can follow along. Um, you know, I continue to hear and continue to read about the uh, about um, um, child care and the the issues there, and that's certainly a big thing. Another one that I that I just wanted to uh, uh, bring up was um, the uh, DAs and SSAs and the rate increase. What's going on there? And they're just they they are. Um, I'm not going to use the word crisis, but it's close. It certainly is close. So um, that's certainly some things that we're going to have to look at uh, going forward. So again, we can go around the table a few times. Maida? Okay. Um, I was uh, struck, but not surprised, by the reiteration of the kinds of needs which were spoken to in our first public hearing. Yes. That, um, a few people brought to our attention Brown was the natural resources conservation district um, as they relate to um, I have my notes correct here that related to BHCD also but um, I was glad to, to, to have this new piece right, and it underscores again HCV does good work not only with regard to the housing component, but also with regard to conservation of our forest land and our farms. That's very, very true. Thank you. Good point. Marty? Well, I would just clarify yes, that one struck me as well because there were two or three that have been involved in that. In the past, this group has come to me because I had natural resources and asked about it. The current funding for them from us is related to BHCD, but as I understand it, the current funding for them goes to the Agency of Agriculture, uh -huh. and it's a fairly small amount. And, and they do get federal funding, but they would like more. Um, one that, um, I mean, we have the continuation of talking about the, the um, Access TV, that was and several others, and there were several that were talking about the adult ed and literacy needing, needing more funds. The, um, regarding the, the adult ed, I know we haven't. Who's got that budget? Does anyone? I think it's me. Okay. I just, how long has it been since we've done anything to assist? Uh, I think they said level funded forever for 14 years or 2014 or something. Yeah. A very long, very long time, time that yeah. we have understood them. And and the, the population they serve is a pretty needy population that could be very productive if they get okay. they're, they are folks I've that have met some of the graduates from the program over the years and they're, they're folks that have decided they're gonna do something. Yes. And we need to help them do something. Exactly. Yep. And, and I think the critical thing on that is that they have not that group. There, there's four groups and they you know divide the money among them among them. Um, they did not receive any ARPA funds or any SR funds or right. there was some ear funds and I'm not exactly sure how that worked. But I'm sure still it's it. not a substantial amount to really help them. Okay. Jim? Yeah, I mean the PEC TV I guess is more of a question. Uh, during the BAA we Added in 300,000, I believe. I don't know if that stayed in the Senate or not. Um, and then I, I know on that proposal it was 600 this year, but I thought we were going to ask uh, another committee to look at the long term funding issue, and I don't know if that's happening or not. Because okay. the, the numbers they gave us kind of escalated every right. year. Right. They had a request for a million. Yeah. But there's two different organizations that, that are attempting to uh, to fix funding. Well, at least two different organizations. 
you know, obviously the, the uh, Center for Crime Victim Services is attempting to fix that, but so is, is this group. And I believe that, that they are trying to get to a point where they can apply for, or perhaps they've already applied for new grant funding. But because it's in line with the federal fiscal year, it doesn't start until October. And so they need to get through July, August, and September, hence the $600,000. That's different. Yeah, yes. no, but that's yeah, that's next year they were asking for even more. That's a different I, group. I, I, yes, yes. Van, I've got the information for Van. Oh, right here. okay, okay. Yes, Trevor. Um, but, well, as, there, as just a follow up to that yeah. conversation, I, I remember hearing, at least in part of that conversation, that the community of jurisdiction that would oversee this had actually said to them, we need to look at that, but in the meantime, go to a probes <laughs> oh. and, and, and look for the bridge funding until that's right. I don't know what those committees are, quite frankly. Probably energy and technology. Energy and technology. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, I, I remember hearing that in a couple of different right. places. Right. They were sent to us. Yeah, no, and, and, and that, but was that for the BAA or was it for both? Both, both. okay. No, in the beginning. Um, the very and beginning. I'm, I'm fine, uh, but if it's just going to build, I mean, we've increased the base funding, so is that the solution we want or is there another funding mechanism that energy and technology is going to come up with? that's sustainable, I, and that's just is the question. I mean, I agree with, I mean, there's a, obviously a lot of good needs out there. I would be curious, and maybe it's just me, everybody has a different perspective at looking at these, but it would be, and I'm not saying I agree with the administration's choices down the line, but they obviously said no on a lot of these, and they put whatever finite amount of money elsewhere. It would be interesting to let them explain why, you know, they didn't build in Peg TV or why they didn't build in um, adult learning. Obviously, because it took money from elsewhere or, or a little other, uh, more of a priority to them. I, I, I just, I appreciate hearing the different perspectives. Sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. If I could, just, I, I understand what you're saying, Tim. But with regard to the Peg TV in particular, yeah. my understanding is following up on what Trevor said, is that they use they used the approach to ask for the three hundred thousand in BAA and six hundred thousand in FY twenty three because that is what the committee of policy jurisdiction said they should do. It wasn't a matter of well, why don't you go ask the um, administration? That's why I think that that's a piece of why it doesn't perhaps show up in the governor's recommended uh, budget. But, yeah. but, but no, I, 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 I appreciate that. that and, and I don't want to see that network fail because of, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars. I'm just asking, I mean, did they ask the administration to be put in part of the base budget because of the shortfall? Um, be a question we could ask them. Yeah. We need but, to ask Adam some of these. Yeah. yeah. But but the reason they're going down is because they've been getting their money from cable. Right. Right. And so yeah. I sent you all the little chart that yep. shows. I saw that. Thank you. Yeah. I remember um, that. Now we're all streaming, so the cable revenue is declining, and that's where they were funded. This is the reason when I bite my grip my teeth and pay my Comcast bill every year, I'm doing it because I'm supporting Middlebury Community Television. <laughs> And as a follow-up, too, remember, I think it was last year, wasn't it, that we, last year or the year before, somewhere, we, we put in a little bit of funding for a study yeah. to be done. And this is all coming. It's the all study related. is, that's that's from the study. Yes, yeah. it's all related. I thought I had the entire study, but I'm not seeing it. I've got it. I can send it to you, Robin, if you want it. Um, sure. Robin, what struck you other than the access network? Well, uh, obviously adult adult learning also, um, because I think it's really, really important. Um, and, and always BHCB, as people have said, and also the downtowns. I think I think that really, uh, that really struck me. Actually, there was one piece of testimony that uh, I read yesterday that was not like all the other testimony that we've gotten. I'm trying to, oh. the second one's in the top, I'll have to come back. I'll let you find it and we'll, we'll come um, back. 
Well, I think it was about the state colleges and scholarships and money and thinking about it as a different way. But I think supporting the state colleges is a pretty important piece as well. So, but I, what I liked was the way the person talked about it and was very thoughtful in the way they suggested us thinking about it. So I will find that and get back to you. One of the things about the state colleges, um, you have a lot of folks that will access uh, an opportunity because it's fairly close. They are not spending funds to, to house themselves or to feed themselves because they're staying at home to do that. And should something happen to some of the state college campuses, um, the likelihood of those folks driving or, or going into a different facility um, is questionable. You know, it doesn't mean they won't, but you cannot absolutely say they will. And, and we could, uh, uh, you know, it may impact Vermonters' desires to improve themselves. So the, uh, the Vermont State College requests are uh, very keen on my mind. And, uh, you know. Well, this was actually from the McClure Foundation. Oh, yes. So I did yep. find it. Good. And it was about, it was about um, really having um, uh, a strategic direction and goal um, and uh, lowering tuition for college-bound students and, but they said we fail to see the strategic objective of driving the institutional allegation of that 15 million. There's 10 million to UVM and 5 million to the state colleges. Um, and uh, they they think that they see the greatest difference is making 10 million to community college at the to lower tuition there to get people into the system. So is it, it's worth reading this two-page um, memo from them. Well, as soon as you made. started talking about it, I have read it. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that they did not recognize in that is that we have the 802 Opportunity Scholarship uh, at the at the community colleges, which means anyone whose family is under fifty thousand dollars in income right. is going there, uh, last dollar free. How how much money do we have into that? That's right now one point nine a year. Okay, so they're talking about a lot more than that. Going well, to sure, season. sure. Yeah. And I think that that is really important to uh, to have something like that. So. Was there two of the last this year? Uh, who's the the colleges? The, the colleges? Um, so the whole last, system. The whole system. So realistically, it's a base of forty eight million. If if we accelerate all the, the base increases, and then a uh, and then if we do that, then the uh, the uh, the bridge would be fourteen or seven or fourteen. I can't remember. I've got to look it up. So that'd be enough to talk yeah, about. I had 55 in my. That's about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. So you're asking me to remember a number instead of looking it up. It's a number worth to remember. I agree. I agree. It's not a small number. It is not a small number. But it's a number. I got to I gotta tell you. Can I? We're debriefing, so please. You were here while I was here. A while, yep. and I watched Vermont State and Marty. I think was here too. Sure, I watched Vermont State colleges come in prior to. Is her name Sophie? Sophie, yeah. yep. And Jeb Spalding annually pleaded with us for more dollars. So we give them anywhere between three and eight million, or somewhere in there closer to five and four and maybe three. But nonetheless, finally one year he came in, basically he threw his badge on the table and said, I'm done folks. We can't do this anymore, we bro. And everybody was astonished. And it was our own fault. That's what worries me more about this whole thing than anything else. These are big asks here, 55 million bucks. So I have a lot of respect for Jeff Spalding. I think a lot of people were mad at him, but the guy did all he could do. He had asked us and we had refused year after year. So I, and I don't want to bore you, but I just don't want to see us start to go in that same direction because those three ladies right there this morning are probably the most some of the most professional people in Vermont. I think I will say this about them they have been extraordinary in the uh, in the response to all the asks that uh, that I have asked of them 
and that this body has asked of them. Um, they have performed an extraordinary amount of work. I'm sorry for using the same same term, but I, I really can't think of a of another term that that's that high in a very short period of time. They are transitioning those facilities from uh, from a, a a stodgy liberal arts institution to a a, a a, a, a liberal arts slash workforce development institution that students want to go to again. And and the thing is, a lot of college students want to go like this. And they are incorporating that. The asynchronous aspect of their of their uh, delivery system is, is, is a great idea. You know, the number of times that, that, that any student would like to I wish I could rewatch or re-see that class because I missed something and I could really, you know, use the, the ability to look at it again. They can. So they are doing things that will help our students in the future. They are succeed. So are it's every other college. Well, you gotta believe. Well, you can't say that because every other college there's a lot of colleges that are just plain closing. And they they wait still for, closing. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh yes. So. Well, that's that's a good thing. Until that feathers out a little bit, I haven't heard that much about it. Until that feathers out a little bit, that that will help help the live colleges. Trevor, we skipped over you. Well, I I think there were a lot of common themes on both yes. states. So, but the two that and I've already spoken to here, but sort of stood out to me in the second go round. You're doing this again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please. Uh, would be the conservation districts and the adult learning. So I think those are the two themes for me that stood out in the second round of uh, uh, presentations, if you will. So, and, and, and again, I, I, I concur with uh, Robin about the importance of adult ed. And certainly, I've had a fair amount of experience with the conservation districts. I work in environmental stuff, so and they do very good work. And, we should try to support them in their ass. Bob, did you have something else or you want me to wait until the next go? No, I'm done. Okay. Kimberly. Yeah, I, I'm going to echo a lot of what's already been said. The conservation districts, I didn't think of it in terms of clean water goals, so that was an interesting piece. The one thing I don't understand is how they work and align with what the extension uh, agents do. So that's just one question that across my mind and the Vermont adult learning I think is really important because as we talked about yesterday there is an entire educational spectrum and literacy is what you need to plug in at any point regardless of where you choose to go and um, it may be because you know you have a language other than English as your first language or any number of reasons so that strikes me as being really important and then the downtown program I also think is uh, interesting because it is different in each place and the needs are different and what people do and how they run with it. I, I've seen what they've done in Montpelier and it's been kind of impressive. So, and I agree with many of the other points that have already been made, in particular the DAs and SSAs. And I think that's going to come up with the budget adjustment in terms of how those dollars are allocated and what's a therapeutic dose. So you just said something that, that, that caused me to, to think regarding the adult basic ed. Um, I wonder if they do, um, uh, and I don't know what it's now called, but English as a second language teaching. You know, we, we, we have a population of, of refugees that are, that are coming into the state, and certainly there's, they're probably going to be settled in a few different locations. You, don't, you want them to feel like they can go have a cup of coffee with someone that's from their home country, you know. So, so putting one here and one here and one here probably yes. is not the preferred uh, methodology. English language learning is what it's called, ELL. It's okay. not ESL anymore. anymore. Okay. Well, I was close. I included something about English and language. So, you know. Yep. And, and yes, they do that. <laughs> they here. do that. And and yes, one of their main things is helping people study for learn English, but study for the the exam, the, the immigrant, the citizenship exam. Okay. And, and a lot of their students, they help them through that process. Right. So yes, we've got new immigrants so, who yeah. well, want to be citizens. Yeah, so that, that's another aspect that, that we need to remember which, you know, when we're if, going through this. So. We, are, we have chosen uh, happily to be welcoming to people coming here from other countries and refugees, and we 
should be supporting that and supporting them. So this is a way to do that. Yep. This is probably the way it happens yep. for the adults. Mm -hmm. Ada, anything else? There was one other thing. I can keep my mind. So I'm getting twitchy. <laughs> my eye fell on um, Mark Hughes, and besides um, urging us to create a, a moral budget, um, he, he had a specific ask uh, $400,000 for the Richard Kemp Center in Burlington. Anybody know what Richard? I, I know who Richard Kemp was. I knew him, but I don't have, have a clue what the center is. All Richard who? Kemp. Kemp. Hey, yeah. Nobody. No idea. So, I guess you just find out. Can you find out for us, Yeah. So that we're going, going on. Yeah. So that, that was, it, thank you, because when I wrote it down, I it was, it was one of those, what's that? Yeah. I'll, I'll check it out. Okay. Anything else? I had one more, um, and only one person spoke about it. It's the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Their uh, executive director came. And I think we're all familiar with the program. We gave them $100,000 last year and the year before from CARES funding because it was related to isolation of these folks who were stuck at home. And, and were blind or almost blind and they needed training on how to use iPhone. There are all kinds of wonderful app, um, apps available for these people to use, but they needed training on how to do that. So we gave them $100,000 for two separate years. They don't have funding on their own to be able to continue that. And this time around, they're asking for $100,000, but for it to be continuing somehow. So we would have to consider that as well. I, I think it's a very, very valuable program. And then full disclosure to everybody, I'll tell you, my husband is chairman of the board of this team and has been for several years. And before that, he was a professional consultant to the organization. So he is very keen on their activities and what they do. And they work in conjunction with our Department of the Blind. It's just that our state agency concentrates on trying to get people into the workforce and actually give them you know, uh, training that will help them do that. Whereas the, the BABBI does certainly do some uh, training. They do a lot of work with children and then a lot of work with other people who are homebound. So it's a worthy um, yeah. effort, I think, but whether we feel comfortable in you know asking Dale to put $100,000 in their budget, is that what they're asking for? That's where I was going. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm trying to find my note. Did they? Do they currently have? They have a base right now. No, they, they do no not. No base. No. Okay. It was just a grant. Okay. And we authorized it through one-time funds to give it to Dale to ask them to grant it out. Jim, you had your hand up. Yeah, I mean there were some questions. I mean we talked about it earlier on the. I assume it's a Medicaid reimbursement that was built in for a 3% increases like choices for care. and you know, do, They're asking for a 10% increase. Um, do we know what that difference is in dollars? Well, we can find out. I don't know if it's on the end, but. Yeah, it's, it's, certainly when we get the, when we get the budget, uh, the, the, uh, the help here, the numbers. Yeah, like you know, the right. web report. Yeah, we'll be able to. We'll, we'll see what a three percent looks like, and it's easy math from there. Yeah, no, I just. I mean, I, I get it. If you haven't had regular ongoing increases, that three percent is may be appreciated, but doesn't catch you up to where you need to be. But I mean, I don't know if we're talking a million dollars or if we're talking twenty million dollars uh, for that difference. So, it's going to be a number between the two. Thank you. Well, definitely. <laughs> so, so when I heard three percent, the first the first thing in my head was around seven million. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll, and we'll find out. Okay, so it would be a pretty big number. It is a fairly big number. Yeah, it doesn't have to it, it, do it. It's just right. Uh, you know, it, it's making it all work. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of issues. A lot of a lot of issues. And there have been years when when they did not receive any type of an increase at all. Well, and that's what I'm getting at. I think 10%, they probably figure it gets them back to where they, I'm assuming, where they think they should be to retain 
you know, the people are attract people to that field. And I get it. it and last month, inflation was seven and a half percent. So um, hopefully that doesn't continue, but it does exasperate the problem. I, I, I know one uh, VA who keeps losing their people to the school system because the school system pays more. Yeah. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's a very I know, it's popular. Sure. Robin? Um, the other one that a, couple, a few people mentioned, actually, I think in both of them, but I'm not sure I've heard us talk about, I think it's already in the governor's budget, is the money for recovery housing, for sober housing and people transitioning. Um, and I, I, I think that's really important because um, we want people to succeed and become self-supporting. And if we don't have those recovery housing, we're going to be paying for it again and again in other ways that are much more expensive. Um, so I, I can't, I, I don't, I'd have to go find the exact amount. I'm pretty sure it was already in the governor's budget, but I, I think that's a really important piece. Yeah, I've got to dig into that. So. Okay, I've also yep. got a follow up email when I raised it from Tom Bell. Okay. That's what I was going to Did say it? also. Okay. He, he had asked specifically for just just uh, a recovery center uh, focused on justice involved individuals, which right. is, and in this email, he explains how it's right. different right. from. And, and and so just to just to you know just to clarify that recovery center is kind of like a turning point where where it is um, um, they are for justice involved youth and recovery housing is is in residence uh, type facility where where people go to to you know, to start getting off of whatever substance they are they are on and then uh, and then they uh, you know, may go out and and work into a uh, um, one of the turning points so. Uh, the what we call them is too similar to get, and it's really easy to confuse the two. So, yes, Trevor, anything else? Yeah, I think the only thing I would add, I think there were a couple folks uh, in that second round that spoke to. I, I'm trying to remember now it was the uh, Vermont Income Tax Assistance Program. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was for uh, helping people to file wow. tax forms. Would normally have to, but you obviously have to if you want to earn income tax credit refunds. And I'm not sure what the ask was on that, but uh, I remember hearing that from a couple of folks. I think it was 400,000. I think it was 400,000. So that, that, I picked up on that. I don't know much about the program. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I would second that. They, yeah. I, I have a constituent who has volunteered for that program for a number of years. and. They don't always get the training um, and they need uh, for that. Um, so anything we can do to yeah. help that, it's a very, very valuable service for especially seniors. Um, right. So. I think RSVP is, helps with that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, which often is coming from the Iowa, but it's a separate funding stream. The ask is 400,000, 80,000 per cap. And as we all know, there's five caps. Really, anything else? I think everything has been said. Yeah. The, the, the one thing that I found is that there was a real consistent theme throughout both public hearings and, and throughout uh, all of the documents that have been sent to us. Um, there was you know, maybe maybe 12 to 15 uh, different real issues that have been pinpointed. And uh, um, I don't know that I can ever can, that I can say that I've had that feeling in past years. You know, yeah. it's it, it just very consistent, narrowly focused concepts, because it, uh, it just seems to me from past years that it's been broader than that. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I think that's probably, that's, that resonates with me, and that may be in part because we have federal fiscal stimulus and recovery dollars in a way that we haven't had in the past, and that's changed the landscape to a certain degree. Yep. Possible. And groups are organized. And that. Yes, they are. Right. Yes, they are. So, all right, very good. Anything else? Just send everybody a, a bigger article that I found about the Richard Kemp Center. Oh, good. Oh, so, so what is it? What is it? 
Oh, did you? Were you able to read it? I <laughs> just yes. send it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me get in here. We're all on the edge of our seats. Yeah, sure. Um, darn it, it's, it's sitting in my chair. It won't. Right. Um, so, um, it's the state's first community center run by Black and Brown Vermonters for Black and Brown Vermonters. The space focused on wellness, cultural empowerment, and economic development. Um, it's once in Burlington, Black and Brown people are implementing policies, processes, programs, and initiatives for Black and Brown people in Burlington, um, as opposed to folks who are outside of that community, say, here's what you are doing. So, um, and it goes on from there, um, including focus on young people. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for looking that up. That's yeah, pretty. The website you can go to the website and you can find out more. But it seems to have Vermont Racial Justice Alliance is across the top. I couldn't find the names of anybody who works there, who the board is, or there wasn't that kind of information yet. They're just getting started. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, this has been good. It's always it's always good to listen to. Uh, uh, Vermonters and, and their needs and get and get uh, folks' perspective, uh, especially in, during the era of COVID when, when it's uh, difficult to have somebody walk in and talk to us as they have in the past. So uh, thanks again to one and all. And uh, we will be back at 1 o'clock promptly.